Let's do it. Shalom, Israel. It's your brother, Marcus G, back with yet another Truth for Thought. First and foremost, I must give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. I must give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. Secondly, our prayer list or the prayer list that I have um, this week, um, we, we're going to start it off with a family. Um, it is the Ellis family, which consists of King Charles Ellis Sr., his queen, Queen Sidney Ellis, and their son, King Charles Ellis Jr., Israel, I ask that you keep them in their prayer. Their family has been going through some very trying times here lately. Um, they recently had a death in the family. And um, there are there is more things that's going on within the family um, that that is not looking very good. So, Israel, please keep the Ellis family family in your prayers also keeping your prayers my spiritual aunt queen shay my spiritual grandma queen raya my spiritual mom queen valerie my other spiritual mom queen paula queen crystal king josh Queen Ashley and Queen Brittany. I also ask Israel that you keep in prayer King Diamond and Queen Lashonda, as well as King Brian and Queen Shavanda, King Jermaine and Queen Kenya. King Greg and King and Queen Sharon. Uh, also, as always, keep in prayer my dearly, dearly beloved um, Queen Tanya and King Walik, Queen Carly, Queen Rita, King. Gino and Queen Alicia, King Yagidian and Queen Doris, King Yada and his queen, and my beloved brother King Mike, as well as myself and my queen, Queen Ashley. Now, let's get into the actual truth thought. Let me grab my phone real fast. Grab my phone. Because there's a reason for this particular truth for thought. That reason being that one of my dearly beloved on YouTube, you all know him as common sense ain't so common. He that is King Gino. Um a couple of years ago I did a a True for thought that was entitled A Call to the Kings. If you've not seen that True for Thought, I implore you, especially if you are a prince or a king in Israel, I implore you, go check it out. All right. But I want to, I want to share with you, Israel, what I very well interpreted as a call to other kings from my beloved brother, King Gino. And I want you to hear this. Israel. I'm reading this. This is a post straight on Instagram. Um, this post was, he made this post back on, let me see. He made this post a week ago, last week. This is what he commented on that post. Israel, we, that's a plural, 
plural pronoun. We, so he wasn't talking about just himself. We are pleased to announce that we are taking back what is rightfully ours. We're taking the father's bow back. And he has a emoji there of the rainbow. Now, for those of you that don't know, the significance of the rainbow. And let me put my phone back. The significance of the rainbow, you can start in Genesis. I want to say Genesis chapter two, and you can read about the significance of the rainbow. The significance of the rainbow is to signify the covenants to and with any thing or people that the Most High has made any covenant with. All right. It is not what man is trying to make it signify today, which is the ABC community, a whole bunch of letters. Oh, I'm not going to go through all those letters. No. I'm not going through that. They all out of order. Because <laughs> the, the alphabet starts A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. But these letters, they all kind of out of order. That's a red flag. Understand that. But outside of that, um, all during the week, he and my beloved brother King, Mike, all on Instagram, they were just putting stuff up to show the actual rainbow and, and what the rainbow was about. And since and what just kept weighing on me was what he said. And he said, Israel, we. That just kept resonating with me. I So this is what I. I literally said to myself, I said, well, self. They are they are letting this community know. The truth about the rainbow. So what I'll do is I'll let them know the truth about them. All right. So the title of this truth for thought, very simple, a message to the ABC community. I want to start this truth for thought out with some foundational scriptures. There are quite a number of them. We're going to start with First Thessalonians, and I, I promise you. You want to have a pen and pad. This this truth for thought has well over 100 scriptures in it, not to mention any and everything else that I'm going to be presenting. Well, over 120 has over 120 scriptures. in it. So we're going to start with First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five, and we're going to get verses 21 and 22. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. These are both pieces of advice. However, this first piece of advice, the Bible does this. It proves this thing. Let's look at the second piece of advice in verse 22. Abstain. From all appearance of evil. Israel. And anyone that is of Israel descent. If you are a so-called Negro. A so-called Hispanic. Or a so-called native. These two pieces of advice. Are very good pieces of advice. Understand. It is a good thing for you to abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from things that are wicked, abominations, all out evil. All right. That's just the first two of the foundational scriptures. Let's go now to 2 Timothy. 
We're going to leave from there. We're going to go to 2 Timothy, and we're going to get verses chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Listen to this, Israel, and people of Israelite descent. Also, I want to go ahead and I'm going to say this right now. There's going to be some scoffers about this when I know it. Last time I did something about I think it was sodomy equals death. It happens every time. Because this, this thing is not new. Not new at all. This, this, this type, these types of fornications and wickedness, they're not new. If they apply to you. And you want to rebuttal the truth. Understand that is the one horrible rebuttal. And I don't give a fuck if your little funk ass feelings gets hurt. Because I'm telling you, I'm going to be reading straight from the Bible. Straight from the Bible. And if the Bible hurts your feelings, because we're going to go over one of these foundational scriptures that's going to say what every scripture of the Bible, what it's inspired, who it's inspired by. Trust me, where you're, who you're going to have a problem, what you're going to have a problem with is going to be the most high. And I promise you, you don't want that kind of smoke. But I'm going to go ahead and get that out the way now. I might should have did that a little earlier, but I'm getting it out the way now. For that, I apologize. Let me get back on task. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. And this is what it reads. All scripture. I, I was just, I just talked about this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine. It is for sound doctrine. For reproof. For correction. And for the instruction in righteousness. Understand. Understand this. This this one scripture says a lot. About every other scripture. In the Bible. It says that all scripture. Is given by inspiration. Of the most high himself. And is profitable. Is used for. Good. Sound doctrine. For reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. All right. The third, that is only the third of our foundational scriptures. Let's go from there to 1 Corinthians. We're going to go from there to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 10, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. And it reads, Now all these things happen unto them for in samples. Remember that word, in samples. It's, it's synonymous with examples. Because we're going to see some examples of some things that are in the Bible. You're going to even hear the word example. Keep that in mind. If you have your pen and pad, write that down right next to this scripture or in parentheses somewhere near the scripture, the word example. And they are written for our, this is to Israel and people of Israelite descent, for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, I went over the world without end just last week. Here you see it's talking about one world. Again, it's singular. <laughs> but that word admonition, I want to get that word admonition. Let me, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to share the screen to the actual definition of admonition per the world because we're going to get it from the world and then we're going to get it from a biblical source so you see here that admonition means a gentle or friendly reproof look at verse 2 
counsel or warning against fault or oversight to keep you from going in error or to counsel you if you are in error. Keep all that in mind. Keep all that in mind. Let me stop sharing my screen. Stop sharing my screen right there. And we're going to um, share it again. And we're going to go back to the Bible. But this time, we're going to go to the BLB. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And that was verse 11, right? Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our, for Israel's admonition. I want to go and look at this, this word admonition. So we're going to go into this, and you see the word admonition right here. It's Strong's G. 3559. This is the BLB, the Blue Letter Bible, for those who don't know. It's transliterated from the word Nuthesia. Right? Nuthesia. The biblical usage of the word is admonition or exhortation. Right? But if you go down here to where it says Strong's Definition. Calling attention to, i.e., by implication, mal rebuke or warning. Like I said, the, the 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 this true for thought is a message to the ABC community. I'll go as far as to say this true for thought can very well be titled. An admonition to the ABC community. It's going to be some rebuking in this, some reproving, some correction. And there's going to be some warning. And that warning is going to be based off of some things that have happened in the past to this same community. In a different time. As well as. What's prophesied to happen to. Where a bunch of them. Just so happened. How ironic and coincidental. Just so happened to stay right now today. To live right now today. We gonna get that today. So let me go back. From the BLB. I just wanted to get that word. Admonition. A lot of people may not have even read that word in the Bible. I wanted them to know what the word meant. Now that they've just read it here with me. Let's go to Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. Again still in the. Foundational scriptures for this truth for, doubt, for thought. Malachi 3 and 6. Classic. For I am the Lord. This is the saith the most high himself. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now we read where all scriptures, all scriptures are on the inspiration of the most high himself. Well, he's not going to change. He's Admitting that right now. So when we look at these scriptures, they mean just that. And there are going to be precepts of it all throughout the Bible. And I promise you, it doesn't change. They pretty much say the same thing. We're going to prove that. A lot of these foundational, you see how these foundational scriptures, they because we did 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 prove all things. But let me keep going because I got some more foundational scriptures to go. We're going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. A lot of folks going to wonder why I went here. A lot of folks going to already have it figured out. 
why I went here. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is to any man. Definitely to people of Israelite descent. Definitely to you Israelites. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Basically, this what this is proving Beyond the fact that he doesn't make any mistakes. It don't matter what you think. It don't matter what you feel. It don't matter what your opinion is or what your belief is. The most high does things the way he does them. He makes things. He creates people as they are born. They are created as he saw fit, not what you think you ought to be, not what you feel you ought to be, not what your opinion of what you should be. The reason I brought this out, because we're going to find out some mistakes have been made at the most high. I'm going to prove he makes no mistakes. I'm going to prove it. Really, really soon. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to get verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And it reads, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose now. If he, if the most high made you a male, it was for his purpose. Not for what you think your purpose is. Don't you see? Man, man has this thing where. They, 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 they take this little saying, this free will. <laughs> well, I'm free. To say that and and willing to say that although I was born with a penis, I'm actually a female. No, 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 no. Because you were given a penis for the purpose that the most high saw fit to you to have. Again, we're going to see how these mistakes were made. Who or what made a mistake? Who or what made a mistake? Let's go to Numbers, going back to the Old Testament, back to the Torah. Numbers chapter 23, and verse 19. Numbers 23 and 19, and it reads, God is not a man that he should lie. He don't even mess up to the point that he have, that he have to lie or repent, but we're going to keep going. We're going to see who made the, what, who or what made mistakes. Neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said, and shall he not do it? So if he say you are a little boy to grow up to be a man, that's what's supposed to happen. Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? If he say he going to destroy little boys that decide they want to be little girls, he will do it. We going to prove all that. We're going to prove all that. And likewise for any little girl that decides they they decided the most high made a mistake. I'm supposed to be a little boy. I'm supposed to grow up as a man, although I was born a female. Let's go to Psalms chapter 18, verse 30. Psalms chapter 18, verse 30. Like I said, some mistakes have been made. Who or what made these mistakes? As for God, his way is perfect. Uh-oh. If the most high didn't make the mistake, who or what made the fucking mistake? 
as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. I'm telling you, if he made you with a penis, he didn't make a mistake. It was for his purpose. However, mistakes have been made. Mistakes are continuing to be made. But then again, you got to understand these mistakes are being made by man. And just like the heavens are higher than the earth, the most highs purpose and things it, it tends to be beyond that of man especially these confused men these confused women that are out of order kind of like their the abcs that they use to represent themselves those are out of alphabetical order they're not even in the order of the abcs Yet mistakes have been made and are continuing to be made. Now, you see here that the Most High, His way is perfect. His will is perfect, right? I want to get this in regards to man and woman. So I want to go to Genesis chapter 2. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Let's go to Genesis. We're still in the foundation. Israel, we, we ain't even made it to the lesson. We just getting foundational stuff. Genesis chapter two, we're going to get verses 18 through 23. We're going to find out the most high's will for any human with a penis, what they're called, what they grow up to be, as opposed to any human with a vagina, what they're called and what they grow up to be. Right. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man, this is in reference to Adam, should be alone. I will make him and help. I will make him and help me for him. Right. Verse 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam verifying that that's the man he's talking about that shouldn't be alone to see what he would call them and whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof keep that in mind because the most high is making every creature right now but he still hasn't made the one creature that's going to be the help meet for Adam right so Adam out here naming all the creatures giving them a name and Adam gave name to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So what Adam is noticing is, wait a minute. I call them squirrels, but there's two squirrels. One is a male and one is a female. Hey, look at those elephants. I call them elephants, but it's two elephants. One is a male and one is a female. I don't look around like, wait a minute. I'm a male, but I don't have a help me. There's not a second type of me, right? And again, we, we started this with verse 18. It said, it's not good for man to be alone. The Most High has already taken into consideration. He already knows Adam is going to see he's the only one of his kind. While he's naming all the other kinds and he sees there's two of each of those kinds, right? So let's let's keep going. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. This right here is the first ever recorded surgery. Anesthetic surgery. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the lord god had taken from man adam had a penis 
Adam was a man. Made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So he made a female, right? But again, Adam had named her yet. That's why where you see made he a woman, you notice that woman is lowercase. Notice that. That's not by mistake. That's not by irony or coincidence. And we're going to find out why. Verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Look at this woman. This woman is capitalized because this is where again Adam was tasked with naming all creatures that roam the earth even the fowls of the air and the fowls of the sea he was in charge of name he, his one of his tasks name all this stuff so he named his help meet woman you can tell it has, again, a capital W here in this particular scripture because she was taken out of man. Notice man is capitalized here. So you have a man with a penis and a woman with a vagina. So how these mistakes were made because this is way back in Genesis, the genome of the beginning. How in the beginning? Because see, th this is what I, 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 it's so crazy to hear things like when people of this ABC community are being um, interviewed, someone could say to them, so are you a man? And th this is what they'll say. Well, I don't. I, I'm not, I, I don't refer to myself as that. Well, well, what do you mean you don't refer to yourself as that? Were you born with a penis? Yes. But I don't identify myself with that. I'm sorry. That's not how it works. It's not what do you identify yourself with? What was the identifying factor you were born with? Now, if you were born with the identifying factor of a penis, you are a male that should grow up to be a boy. Later on, a man. If you were born with the identifying factor of a vagina, you are a female that should grow up to be a girl and grow even further to be a woman. So I, I brought this out to simply say again, mistakes were made. Here we see the beginning where there was man capitalized in verse 23 at the end of verse 23 and woman capitalized in verse 23 yet mistakes are being made every day here's a good example There's a basketball player. I just refer to this basketball player as Mr. W. Mr. W has a son that at the age of 12 years old, this boy decided, I now want to be a girl. Now, here's where the mistake was made. But you were born a boy. You were born a boy for a reason as the most high. His way is perfect. We read that already. But yet this little boy feels like it's his opinion. He believes that. He believes that he is a little girl. 
Here is where the mistake is made every time within the ABC community. Every time. We're going to further prove that, though. We're going to further prove that. I want to go still in just a foundational. We got one, two, three, four, five, six more verses for the foundational. You got to excuse me, Israel. I want no stone left unturned. So even for the foundational scriptures, I'm going to get in depth. Let's go to Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter three. We're going to get verses five through seven. Again, like I said, some mistakes were made, right? Let, let's see. Let's prove. Let's start looking at how these mistakes were made. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path, right? Verse 7. Be not wise. In thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Now, let's go back and look at that example. We got a 12-year-old little boy. It's his own understanding. He, he was wise in his own eyes at 12 years old. I, I, I'm, I'm not a little boy. I'm a little girl. How? The most I didn't make a mistake when he made you a little boy. Yet mistakes were made. Mistakes are continually made, especially in the ABC community. But we got to further prove. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 23. Still just foundational scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 23 for this particular truth for thought. Truth for thought. Verse 17. And it reads, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Uh, oh, uh, oh, now, now I'm finna start uh, kind of keying in on a certain people. <laughs> if you are of Israelite descent, if you are a so-called Negro, a so-called Hispanic or so-called native. <laughs> as far as the females, little girls, women of Israel, none of you shall be whores. As far as the males, little boys, men of Israel, None of you shall be sodomites. I have to right now. Well, let's go to let's go to Leviticus 18 and 22 before I before I do this. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. The book of the laws now. Book of the laws. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. What that is saying is if you're a man. You don't lie down with a man as you would with a woman. See, you were made a man to lie with a woman, which is why we went all the way back in Genesis. And you were made a woman to lie with a man, right? If you do, look at the very end of this. If you do, it is an abomination. Remember, one of the foundational scriptures that I went over was 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 and 22. Verse 22 said, to abstain from the appearance of evil. Abomination is synonymous with evil. If you are of Israelite descent, again, if you're a so-called Negro, a so-called Hispanic or a so-called native. I said that's some that's some sound advice. That's some sound advice. You don't want to do this type of abomination either. Some very sound advice. All right. 
But I want to key in. Let me stop sharing my screen. I want to key in on this word sodomite so we can break this on down because I don't want to leave any stone unturned. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to see the definition of what sodomite is, right? And we're going to go to the BLB as well. <laughs> what is a sodomite? A sodomite is someone who practices sodomy. Now, listen to this. This is what the world says. The word sodomite is often offensive. It's used as a term of abuse and disparagement for a gay person. Well, we're going to find out if it's an abusive or disparaging term when we find out exactly what sodomy is. And we're going to see if it's just telling the truth or if it's being abusive or disparaging okay so we're gonna see what sodomy is let's just let's just find out let's just find out if if i see someone who practices sodomy if i call them a sodomite if i'm being offensive or if i'm just calling a goddamn spade a spade let's see what sodomy anal or oral copulation with another person especially anal or oral copulation with a member of the same sex with the same sex so basically just what the bible said that is an abomination. A sodomite is an abomination because a sodomite is a man who instead of laying with womankind, he lays with mankind. He literally says this is an abomination. That is what a sodomite is. And it's the same for a woman. So if you were bore with a vagina, And you feel like, or it's your opinion of, or you you just think you're supposed to lie with another woman, you too are a sodomite. You 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 are doing this with the same sex. Right? If you were born a man, if you were born with a penis, give a damn about no damn. I, I had 50 damn operations so that I don't have it. No, what were what was your identifying factor upon birth? You were born a male. And you lie with another man as you supposed to with a woman. You are this abomination of a sodomite that is just calling a spade a spade. I don't give a fuck who mad about it. I don't care it, 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 what you feel, think, what your opinion is. I can give a fuck. Let's go from there. Let's go back to the bottom. Let's go back to the Bible. Let me stop sharing my screen. We're going to go back to the Bible. And we're going to go to Leviticus 20 and 13. Let's go to Leviticus 20 and 13. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. And we got just two more foundational scriptures. Leviticus chapter 20, outside of this one. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. And it reads, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. 
both the men. Same on the flip side of the coin. If a woman should lie with a woman instead of lying with a man like they're supposed to. It's an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them on your own hand. Understand that straight from the Bible. Not because I say so, or not because I feel so, or not because I think so, or it's my opinion that that's straight from the Bible. I'm reading the Bible. I want to go from there to 1 Corinthians. Going back to the New Testament. Going to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye that the unrighteous, these are this is going to be a rundown of unrighteous, abominable, all out evil things that shall not inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the most high, right? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Be not. Be ye not deceived. Neither fornicators. And I'm going to tell you. The ABC community, all your little alphabet. Those are all different fornications. Point blank, all different fornications. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. These are men that are supposed to be masculine, but they're effeminate now. They, they, they not a man no more. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Right here, that's man laying with man. Woman laying with woman. Abusing yourselves. It, it literally says, shall not inherit. There's no heaven for you. This is just a message to that community. There is no heaven for you. There is no kingdom for you. But we're going to find out what normally happened to people like you as it has happened in the past. And it's foretold, especially if you live in God forsaken Babylon, that's going to happen to this place, too. But we going to get it. We going to get it. Let's go to First Timothy, chapter one. Let's go to First Timothy, chapter one, First Timothy, chapter one, and we're going to get verse 10. We're going to get verse 10. Here are some other different, again, fornications. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. Guess what that is? ABC community, guess what that is? That's you. That's y'all. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Wait a minute. I think we talked about sound doctrine. I think we talked about how all scripture is inspired by the most high to be doctrine for reproof. For correction and for instructions in righteousness. Oh boy. You notice how all of this is the same? It has not changed. It doesn't matter where we go. Everywhere that you see anything that is a type of fornication, including defiling yourself with mankind. It's not good. Everywhere we've seen so far, these just been the foundation. That's the end of the foundational scriptures for everybody to know. This is just the foundation of this truth for thought. So now, with all of those things in mind, 
I want to go to Genesis chapter 13. So now we're going to get into this message. This message for um, the ABC community. Right? Let's get into this message for the ABC community. First, um, to that community, I want you to know this. It's not the first time y'all have representatives of your community have always existed right always y'all just decided now to put a, a a new little label on yourselves a little catch-all label in fact but we gonna see a catch-all for y'all in the in the in the in the scriptures as well we gonna see it, and as soon as I see it, I'm gonna let you know that that's what it is. It's a catch-all for y'all. Fornication is a catch-all for y'all, just in case. Just, just, just. We've saw that word already, but there's another one that I that I want you to see. We're gonna go to Genesis chapter thirteen, and we're gonna get verses six through thirteen, right? I want to lay a little, lay something down, right? This is about Abraham and his brother Lot. See, Abraham and his brother, once they, at one point in time, they resided amongst <clears throat> one another, right? And we're going to go back and we're going to look at this because Although they started out amongst one another, they going to go their separate ways. And Abraham going to go one way and Lot going to go another way. And he going to go to a place full of representatives from the ABC community. But before I get there, I want to paint the backdrop as to why they departed their ways. And this was by instruction, right? But let's find out. Genesis chapter 13, we're going to get verses 6 through 13. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. Again, this is talking about Abraham and Lot. For their substance was great, so they could not dwell together. They had so much amongst one another between Abraham and Lot. They was running out of room. They was running out of real estate. Okay. And there was a strife between the herd men of Abraham and the herd men of Lot's cattle. That's how much they had. We're like, man, whoa. Wait a minute. Hey, ain't you one of Lot's herd men? Some of your cattle them ran over here, man. And some of my cattle over there. So it's beginning to bring about this strife, right? And the Canaanites and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. So not only was Abraham and Lot there, there were other people there. Other people from different other biblical nationalities. Abraham and Lot of Israel, right? Of Israel. And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. So Abraham then went to Lot and said, look, we don't need to have strife amongst us because we brethren, right? Verse 9. And verse 10, but no, verse 9. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If thou depart to the right, then I will go to the left. So this was the, the proposition that, that Abraham made to his brethren Lot. Okay, And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was all well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom. And Gomorrah. So this is how he looked before the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Keep that in mind. It looked beautiful 
one for the most high destroyed that area even as the garden of the lord like the land of egypt and thou comest unto zor then lot chose him all the plain of, so he said i'm gonna go that way and lot journeyed east and they separated themselves the one from the other right Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Remember that. But the men of Sodom, verse 13, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceeded. Hmm. And this, where you see the men of Sodom, that is a male and female vernacular. The women there were exceedingly wicked as well. So what I want to do now, what I want to do now, and I didn't even have my screen shared for all of that. I apologize. What I want to do now is... I want to go into BLB. I want to go into BLB. And I want to get Genesis 13. And I want to get verse 13. Genesis 13. And we're going to go down to verse 13. Well, first, we're going to start at verse 12. There's a reason for that. Let's go to the inner linear for Sodom. Right? For Sodom. So it's translated from, transliterated from the word Sodom. Right? It was a Canaanite city usually paired with Gomorrah, located in the area of the Dead Sea and the Jordan River, both cities were destroyed by God in judgment. That's why I came here. I wanted to see. I wanted to get a little more detail about Sodom, right? About Sodom. So... It mentioned that the men of Sodom, which was a male and female molecular, right? The men of Sodom were wicked. Verse 13, Genesis 13 and 13. And sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Let's see if there's truth to that. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 32. I want to see some. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Now, two weeks ago, I want to say two weeks ago, in a truth of thought, I said that we talked about the bearing of fruit and good fruit bears good fruit or good trees bear good fruit while these wicked awful bad trees they bear evil wicked fruit right these this is bad fruit it's very very bad fruit very bad fruit i want to go from there it's just proven i gotta prove all things i gotta prove because we know what sodomy is we know what a sodomite is and sodomites resided in sodom and gomorrah and they committed sodomy on the regular 
and we got the definition of both a sodomite and sodomy. But I got to prove everything. I got to prove how wicked this is. Let's go to 1 Kings. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 24. Let's see how evil, how wicked, how much of an abomination is we read in the, the, the other, the, the foundational scriptures. How much of an abomination this is, right? We go on to 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 24. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord. So there are some people of Israelite descent that did this. And they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed above all their fathers. No, this is not correct. Uh, scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm reading verse 22. Verse 24. And there were also sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations, which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. So there were some Israelites who were doing this abomination, these abominations of the ABC community. Right. Right. So if you are of Israelite descent, if you are a so-called Negro, Hispanic, or Native, and you into this type of shit, understand it's an abomination. Understand there is no seat for you in the kingdom as we saw in our foundational scriptures. If you feel that as a man, you can only love a man as your lifetime partner. Or if it's your opinion that I can give a fuck about how you feel, your opinion, what you think or what you believe. Because I'm coming straight from the scripture. Straight from the scripture. So before we read about, because uh, we're going to now go to the account of Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 18. But before we do that, I want to get a little background. I want to get a little background on Sodom and Gomorrah. I want to get a little background on Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. Um, let's start with close that out, close this out. Okay. Let's go here. Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Know the full story of Sodom and Gomorrah and the Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah was an ancient city of Syria located in the plain of Jordan. This is the world verifying that which Lot saw that he went to to reside in. Now, this is going to be verified in the Bible in Genesis 18, which we're going to go to after this. The city was destroyed by fire from heaven in the time of, of Abraham and Lot. The city's wickedness became proverbial. The sin of sodomy. Now, we got the definition of what sodomy was. We got the definition of what sodomy was. The sin of sodomy was an offense against nature, frequently connected with idolatrous practices. The fate of Sodom and Gomorrah is used as a warning to those who reject the gospel. The word is used in typical sense in Revelation. 
Sodom was presumably located in plain south of the Dead Sea, just like we saw in the BLB. Now covered with water, the name is still preserved in Jabal Uzdam, Mount Sodom, right? The Bible story about the city of Sodom and Gomorrah is a sad story. No, it is a true story. Shit wasn't sad. Wasn't sad at all. They were doing acts of abomination. The most high judged them, and righteously so, because, hey, who had the mistake? Who was making the mistake? Did the most high make these men to be men sleeping with men and women sleeping with women? Who made the mistake? Right? Mistakes were made. Mistakes are still being made today. But who's making, who or what is making the mistake? Because see, man, when it comes to the judgment of these actions, the most high does the judging. So no, it wasn't a sad story. He judged. He righteously judged as they were doing acts of abomination. Right? Right? That reminds us of just how much God hates sin. During the time of Abraham, three angels came to visit him, and two of the angels decided to go visit Sodom and Gomorrah. They didn't decide. They were instructed to. It, I, 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 I use the world stuff just... just to prove some things, but man, they were shit so mother. It was not a sad story. It was a very true story. It was a very, very just story, just account, as it was a just judgment. Wasn't sad when nothing sad about it. What's sad is folks know of this account and they still decide to practice sodomy. To be sodomites in 2023. Yo, this didn't happen in 2021 or 2022. This this happened so long ago. Like I said, it, this ain't new. Yo, little community, ABC community, y'all shit ain't just started. It ain't no no. You all were referred to as Sodom and Gomorrah. Back in the day. That's what you were referred to. Let's start back where it says. Three angels came to visit him. And two of the angels decided to go visit Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord told Abraham that he would destroy the city because of the people's sins. God also told Abraham that he would spare the people and not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if he can find even 10 righteous people. That is the reason why I went to Deuteronomy 32 and 32 and 1 Kings 14 and 24, because it proved how wicked the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were. So now, let's go back to the Bible. We got a little background about Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to go back to the Bible. We're going to Genesis chapter 18 and we're going to get verses 18 through 33. Genesis chapter 18 18 through 33. We're just going to get the back end of this. The reason why is because you saw where it said the Most High said, if he just found 10 good people, 10 righteous people, he'd spare. He wouldn't destroy a place. Let's see if there's some truth to that. Genesis 18 and 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. 
and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he have spoken of him. And the Lord said, this is thus saith the Most High, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous. Now, the cry that he's talking about is not they crying because they need help. No, what he's saying is these. I'm not going to use certain descriptive words, but these damn fools, I'll say that. committing sodomy down here, committing all types of fornication down here, right? And they doing it so much that the sin is, the, the amount of the sin, the all these sins are the cry, right? I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, according to all these sins, which it is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Most High. Now, here comes this interaction that we just read about in that, that one little piece between Abraham and the Most High. Check this out. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? So Abraham poses a question to the Most High. He said, well, Most High, are you going to, if there are any righteous there, because he first he knows his brother's there. He knows there's at least one righteous, and he knows his brother teaches he's the head of a family. He teaches the family to be righteous, right? The proper order of the family went over there at the royal gathering, but the head taught everybody under him. Right. The king taught the queen, taught the prince and princesses. Right. So he knows his brother is there. He like, OK, let me see if everyone's going to be destroyed or if there's any righteous ones, if the most high, if he will let them go. Right. He starts out with the question. Which is, wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked. Peradventure, or say for instance, there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. So he's asking the most high, if it's 50 of them, would it not be right when you judge that place that that 50 be spared? And all the wicked ones, all the abominable ones, just, just, just kill them, but just spare the 50, right? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for the sake of that 50, for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, behold now. I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure, peradventure, say for instance, say for instance, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for the lack of five? So he's saying, so I said 50, but what if it's 45? What if it's not quite 50? And he said, if I find there are 40 and 5, I will not destroy. So the most I said, if it's 40 and 5, if it's 45, close enough to 50, close enough to 50. We can round it up. We can round it up. But I just say just to 45. You know what? I won't destroy it then. 
And he spoke unto, so here Abraham spoke to the Most High again. He said, peradventure, just for instance, just for instance, there shall be 30 be found there. So you see, Abraham is walking the number down. He's like, wait a minute. Is it actually 50 that's doing righteous there? Or? Well, let's see. If, let's check only if it's 45. Well, let's see if it's 30. So he down to 30. Per adventure, there shall 30 be found there. And here's the answer. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Okay, okay. So the most high, you know, he working with Abraham. He, he 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 working with Abraham, right? And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, just for instance, just for instance, there shall be 20 found there. And he said, the most high answered and said, I will not destroy it for 20 sake. Remember this. If it was just 20 in the city, the most I said, he will not destroy it. Right? And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Per adventure, 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10 sake. So if it's at least 10 people, kind of like what we just read in that article. If it's at least 10 people, 10 righteous people. Most I would not, he wouldn't have destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham and Abraham returned unto his place. So there is the part of the account that we just read about in the article. Now, the article also said, that, yes, the place was destroyed. So let's get that actual account. We're going to go over one chapter. Genesis 19. We're going to read all the way down to verse 28. All the way down to verse 28. And we're going to kind of speed this up. This is like Bible 101. Um, most, most people know the account of Sodom and Gomorrah and it didn't end well. It didn't bode well for the ABC community back then. Didn't bode well for y'all. Y'all got all the little, you know, y'all didn't try to get fancy with shit. <laughs> you know, y'all catch all is a bunch of letters. But like I said, we gonna see the Bibles catch all for y'all. Genesis 19, we're going to get from verse 1 all the way down to verse 28. And there came two angels, verifying that which we read, to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. So Lot sees them coming. He's greeting them. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Let's look at that. I said, look, I see y'all coming into town. Come in, relax, kick your feet up. In my home, as I'm to be hospitable to you all as your servant. And they said, nah, we got business in the streets tonight, play. We, <laughs> we got a mission. We we out here on business. Not not this isn't a leisure trip. We out here on business. Okay. And he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him. So he kept urging them, just come on. It's been a y'all, I don't know how far y'all travel, but it probably was a far travel. Come on, kick your feet up. Just relax with me. Right. So they eventually 
They said, okay, we're going to go on and we're going to chill with you. And entered into his house and he made them a feast and he did and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they lay down, oh, Sodom, before they lay down, Sodom started being Sodom. Sodomites started showing that they're Sodomites. The ABC community showed that they the ABC community. Let's see. Let's just see. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed around the house, compassed the house round, both old and young. It didn't matter what age they were. All the people from every quarter. That means now you got men and women out. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? So the men want to know where are those two men? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, the word know. A lot of folks should say, hey, they're just some friendly people. They want to meet them. No, no, no. The word no means to have sex with them. Um, when Adam knew Eve, she was pregnant. Everywhere that a man knew a woman, they became pregnant. That is having sex in the Bible. In the Bible. So they want to have sex. These men want to have sex with the angels. Sodomites being sodomites. The ABC community being the ABC community. Right? And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after him. He's like, oh no, y'all stay out. Right. Let me talk these fools down. They don't. They some damn fools. Let me talk to them. That's what he's telling the two angels, right? Let me talk. Let me go out here and address these fools. So Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, these were his brethren. I'm going to say again, if you are of Israelite descent, if you are a so-called Negro, Hispanic, or Native, you better take heed to the warning, to the message. You might want to take heed to the Adam, uh, to the admonition admonition that I'm giving right now straight from the Bible and said I pray you brethren do not so wickedly don't come with the wicked shit y'all don't understand this is two angels in here don't come with the wicked shit right now That's Hey, yo, he, now he trying to plead with the ABC community. Look, man, y'all don't know. These ain't regular men in here. These are, look, don't worry about it. This above your, your thought. But, but y'all don't want to, y'all don't want to do all this stupid, wicked shit right now. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck, go somewhere. In fact, I got a proposition for you. Let's see, let's see what Lot proposed to these damn fools. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Again, that word, no, they've not had sex with a man. He's telling all these men this. Behold, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and you do ye to them as in good in your eyes, meaning it's a good thing for you men to lay with women. 
only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So he's slick trying to tell him, look, man, look. I got two, I got two girls. All y'all men that's doing all this damn rah-rah and talking and shit. I got two women that have not known any man. Hell, y'all know them. Y'all been staying here too. They've been staying here. Ain't none of y'all tried to talk to them because y'all on that wicked shit. But how about this? How about now y'all try to do that, which is right. Right? But the men put forth their hand and pour a lot into the house to them and shut the door. So the angel said, hey, you're trying to make a deal with them. No, come back in here. Come back in here. Because remember, we told you we had some goddamn business to handle. And goddamn the ABC community then showed us that they're going to be the ABC community. And that's what business we come to handle. Right. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So they blinded these men that want to get to know these two angels. Right. The angels blinded. Them. And the men said unto Lot, has thou here? any besides man who else righteous around here besides you we see you righteous who else righteous besides you son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, these fucking sins, this ABC community, y'all so full of sin. Y'all so wicked. This shit is so wicked and so much of an uh, abomination to the most high. And the Lord have sent us to destroy it. And I see we're going to go down to verse 30 to... No, verse 28, we're getting the whole thing. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. These damn fools. Sons-in-law. Let's keep going. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here. Why? What happened to the sons-in-law? They wanted to stay. They wanted. Because remember, Lot said he got two daughters that have not known men. Although they had married the daughters, they ain't had sex with the daughters because they out here fucking the men. That's why the angels are telling him, to look, fuck it, get up, take your wife and your two daughters, which are here, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of this city, lest you die with the sins of all these other motherfuckers in this city, of this whole ABC community in Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed and Lot said unto them O oh, not so my lord behold now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life and I cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die right but notice the amount of people 
It was Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. The Most High could not even find 10. Now he when during the negotiation phase back in chapter 18, right? When Abraham went, because he knew Lot was over there. He said, if you find 10, will you not destroy the place for the sake of that 10? But most I sent two angels and they found four. And if you even round four, it's going to round back down to zero. It's not going to even round up to 10. Right. Most I didn't even find 10. This damn community back then was running rapid. It ain't the same thing happening today. But we going hey, we gonna see. I got some things I want to look at to reflect on the then and the now. All right. So where was I? I was at. And he has said unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for that which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. So he told him to hasten the Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when light entered into Zor. And the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah a brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground, but his wife. Listen to this. All she had to do was not look back, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace so Abraham knew the most high didn't even find at least 10 had he found 10 he know he wouldn't have saw the smoke in the, the fire as if it was a furnace. So Abraham knew at that moment, right? So that was what happened to the ABC community back then, right? I want to go from there. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 19. The reason I want to go here is because look, look at this. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. What I'm doing is I'm transitioning from Sodom and Gomorrah to modern day. And we just so happen to be in Babylon. But let's prove it. Let's go to Revelation 17 and 5. Revelation 17 and 5. Revelation 17 and verse 5. Right? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Where is the ABC? Where did the ABC committee or the community, where did, where did these motherfuckers start it? Right here in the good old U.S. of A. In modern day Babylon, right? So let's go to Revelations 18. We're going to see what, what's supposed to happen to modern day Babylon. And I promise you it's going to sound kind of like what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. And a lot of the sins of you Sodomites. You people after strange flesh. That's the catch all for y'all in the, in the Bible. After strange flesh.
started. The, the big push for this shit started right here in Babylon. Right? So let's see what's going to happen to Babylon. I promise you. It's eerily reminiscent of Sodom and Gomorrah. Eerily reminiscent. Right? So let's look at Revelation 18. Revelation 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel came down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, how many times do we read about how sodomy is such an abomination, an unclean thing? An unclean thing. So this place is going to fall, right? Babylon is going to fall. Babylon is going to fall again. Eerily reminiscent of what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. Everywhere that this ABC community goes, it be the same damn result. Here is a message to you, ABC community. One, there is no seat. There is no place for you in the kingdom. There is no place for you. To everywhere you go, all throughout time, and I ain't done yet. Trust me, I got other things I'm going to go into. It's the same result for you. Every time. Whether it's something that has already happened. Or something. Prophesied to happen. Everywhere that you all take root. It's the same thing. But again, the most high didn't make a mistake. He made you a man or he made you he made you a male or he made you a female. He made you a male to lay with a female in the appropriate time. And he made a female to lay with a male at an appropriate time, at an appropriate age. So I want to get a precept to verse two, right, about the falling of Babylon. Let's go to Revelation 14, verse eight. Revelation 14, verse 8. Let's see what it say. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her. Key word, fornication. Oh, I think I mentioned that word a long time ago in this truth for thought. These sexual acts that y'all these the strange flesh like i said that's the catch all for y'all in the bible um it's a it's all fornication i don't care if you label it with a l and say lesbian it's fornication it is an abomination i don't care if you use a b and say bisexual it's fornication I don't care what fucking alphabet you put there. And then you put all those particular alphabet together to be your catch-all. Understand, there is a catch-all for you and your actions. And it's called fornication. It's called abusers of yourselves with mankind. It's called being after strange flesh. Per the Bible. Per the Bible. Not me. 
Let's go back to 18, Revelation 18. Let's go on. We're going to read this down to uh, 23. Verse 3. Like I said, I just went over a precept. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Same thing. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. So guess what? The push to take the most high sign of a covenant, right? The push from right here in Babylon, that shit then reached overseas to other places. Now other nations are drinking of this wine of this fornicating place. Right? Everywhere that you are, you ABC community, understand Y'all get the same treatment. It's not going to change. Outside doesn't change. His judgment isn't going to change in regards to the abominable, the abominable acts that you all practice. You don't give a fuck about what you feel. You feel like you should have been a woman. I most I don't give a fuck. He ain't dealing with that. Let me keep going. Verse four. And I heard another voice from the heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Look, remember when Abraham was bargaining with the most high? Like, what if you find 50? What if you find 45? What if you find 30? What if you find 10? Look here. If there would have been 50, there would have been a warning kind of like this. Come up out of her. Kind of like Lot was told. Get up out of her. Don't look back. This is a prophecy. Y'all see this shit is happening right now. You better come up out of this shit. If you are of Israelite descent. I'm going to say that again. If you are so-called Negro, Hispanic, or Native. I'm going to say that again. And I heard of another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. That's why I said, if you are Israel descent. Come out of her, my people, that ye not be partakers of her sins. Yo, if you are of Israelite descent and you in this stupid ass community, this foolish ass community, this community has leaned on its own understanding about what their orientation are. Just call themselves smart to be dumb as hell. If you in that damn community, you better come up out of that shit. Because we finna see what's going to happen to this place. Right? Again, this is an admonition, a reproof, and a warning. As I got the definition for it, what an admonition is. That ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven. The same thing happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Same thing. The sins had reached up to heaven. Irony or coincidence. Exact same thing. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Look, not only has this soil has so much blood on its hands, look at these other abomination of acts 
that this place is into. Right? Let's keep going. How much have she glorified herself and lived deliciously? So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Hey, you want to know how you know this is Babylon? What's the superpower? If you ask <clears throat> every country on earth right now today, are you the superpower? All of them going to say no, except for one. One going to say, oh, yeah, we the superpower. It's this place. It's this place. So, yes, this is talking about Babylon. This is talking about what you know as the United States. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Remember, in Sodom and Gomorrah, he judged them. He judged them this with the same type of judgment. With the same type of judgment. Everywhere. We actually, I can stop right there. Well, now I, I need to go a little further. I, I know I need to go a little further. And it was a righteous judgment, even for Sodom and Gomorrah, right? But let's go a little further. Nine, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her and lament for her. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That This just happened out of, I, I, I wasn't even touching I'm not touching my laptop or nothing. And, and, and that just, that, that really just happened. And then it took me all the way to Genesis. I was in Revelation. Let me go back to Revelation 18. I know exactly where I was. Revelation 18. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth. Who have committed fornication and live delicious with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Just like Abraham looked over towards the plain and saw the smoke of Sodom and Gomorrah burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city the one they say they the superpower. That mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Everywhere you go, ABC community. And I will stop right there as far as in here, because I got some other scriptures I want to go into. Right? Everywhere you go, ABC community, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. The most high has not changed. This is a message to you. If you are of Israel descent, this is a warning to you. You may want to come up out of her. Come up out of that shit. It's an abomination. If you are of Israelite descent, you and only you can repent and come back into righteousness. But let me go for anyone that's in the ABC community. I ain't finna go through all them goddamn letters. It's more than just the three of ABC. For any of you that's of Israelite descent, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 3, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 9. Let's see what this say. Let's see what this say. The shoe of their continents doth witness against them, and they declare their sins as Sodom. This is what you need to do. Because this is what you motherfuckers are doing right now, this part right here. They hide it not. You motherfuckers is out here with the ABC community. If you are of Israelite descent, you damn fool. Y'all out here, y'all like them. Y'all, y'all want to be like them. 
Y'all wanna y'all wanna go up in flames like them? Everywhere they go, everywhere they establish themselves. Back in the day, they were called sodomites. Now they're called LBGT and some other shit. Whole bunch of other alphabets. And then a plus at the end, like, and there's more. We're going to add more. We're just waiting to see what we're going to add. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. The very second <clears throat> foundational scripture I went over was 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. I said it's a very good piece of advice to abstain from the appearance of evil. If you are of Israelite descent and you are a part of this ABC community, you obviously didn't take the first piece of advice in the foundation. How about this? How about this? How about this admonition, right? Woe unto you. Not because of my because I feel like that. Not because I think like that. Not because I believe that. <laughs> Not none of that. I'm literally reading it from the Bible. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. The very opposite of what the Bible tells anyone of Israelite descent to do. Because we read back in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. You're supposed to abstain from the appearance of evil. So let's look at some things that Israelites did. Israelites did. To people of this same community throughout time. Although they weren't called this actually community back then. But let's just look at some things that Israelites did to them. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 15. 1 Kings chapter 15. This just and and this is just an admonition to the whole damn community. This is a, actually a warning to the community. This is reproof to that community. You you y'all sit and do this these abominable acts. You sit and say basically the Most High is wrong. How is he wrong? He gave you a. a if he gave you a penis or a vagina, right? How is he wrong? Huh? Show me where the Most High made a mistake. I want you to prove that thing. Prove that the Most High made a mistake. Uh, and and. And when he made a mistake, right, you gon' you would be forced to say he did everything else perfect, but he made a mistake with me. Oh, what? That's why we did the foundational scripture. See, there's nowhere that this community can hide biblically at all. Nowhere. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 15. We're going to get verses 9 through 12. Verses 9 through 12. We're going to see what happened. What happened to Sodomites. What Israelites did to Sodomites. To the ABC community. Back in the day. We're going to get verses 9 through 12. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel reigned Asa over Judah. So Asa was reigning over Judah. And 41 years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother named Masha, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. So look, when y'all say that, Y'all be feeling like y'all are, 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 are on an island. It's what the fuck you supposed to be. This is what 
Israel did, we hey, we isolated you motherfuckers. Get the hell over there. Yes, we called you out. We said, oh, that's a sodomite. Mm -mm. He go over there. He one of the ABC guys. He Oh, he fall in one of these letters. Oh, yeah, you keep him over there. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 22. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 22. We're going to get verse 46. We almost done with this truth for thought. Because this some um, man, I promise you. And the remnant of the sodomites, meaning the end of the the last of them back then, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. So the son of Asa also was deporting them. Get your ass the hell on. Take your abominable asses on somewhere. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 23. 2 Kings chapter 23. And we're going to get verses 1 and 2 just for context, just so we'll know. And the king sent and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him. And the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which he found, which was found in the house of the Lord. So this is all Israelites, right? Let's drop down to verse four through seven. We finna see what he did to the ABC community back then. And the king commanded Hekiah, the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the hosts of heavens. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priest. He killed the idolatrous priest. Whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burn incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the hosts of the heavens. So to all of all these folks that was into idolatry, he killed them. Verse six. And he bought out of the grove of the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder therefore upon the graves of the children of the people. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the houses that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings from for the grove. Even Israelites knew not to deal with your ABC community. Now, let's look at what the most high did. What the most, how the most high outlook on the ABC community, right? Let's see. Let's, let's just see. Let's go to Jude. Chapter Jude. Verse 7. Jude chapter 1 is only one chapter. Verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner. So every city, every place, everywhere the ABC community go. Because he's talking about where you motherfuckers started. So where y'all started, every, from all the way where y'all started to anywhere you go giving themselves over to fornication, like I said, and going after strange flesh. I told you the Bible got to catch off for y'all. Y'all go after strange flesh. You all are after strange flesh. Are set forth for an example. I said, remember this word, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. They you either the ABC community, you're gonna be made an example of this. Don't change the most high, don't change. How? How are you gonna be made by burning? Oh. 
point blank. Deuteronomy, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 23. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 23. And he reads, and that the whole land therefore is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown nor beareth nor any grass grow up therein like the overthrow of Sodom. You see what I'm saying? He, he, everywhere you go, ABC community, he burns you down to where you, it's desolate. And Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath, places just like Solomon and Gomorrah. Guess what's going to happen here in Babylon? Is it irony or coincidence? Here go another fornication that they pushing all throughout the world. Straight from Babylon. But ABC community, y'all, y'all, hey, look, y'all actually existed prior to today. Y'all existed in Sodom and Gomorrah. People just like you. Just like you. And you got, and they got burned to the ground. Here's an admonition to you. So will you. Not because I say it so. The Bible has said that. But let's keep going. Let's just see. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 18. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 18. Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 18. Let's just see. As in the overthrow of Solomon and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, saith the Lord, saith the Most High, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. He is going to take care. There, although there's not a seat for you in the kingdom, there is a place for you. There is something that will happen to you. Understand that. Understand that. Let me go to Lamentations chapter 4, verse 6. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 6. And I'm almost done with this truth for thought. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 6. Everywhere that yo, everywhere this community has ever gone. Lamentations chapter 4. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is great. Is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. That was overthrown as in a moment. And no hand stayed on her. Everywhere the ABC community go. It gets overthrown. And desolation is there. That's what's going to happen to you. This is a little message to the ABC community. That's, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Let's go to Amos 4 and 11. Amos 4 and 11. Let's just, I'm just basically just seeing it. If, if, if any of this ever changes. Amos 4 and 11. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Hey, ABC community, it ain't looking good. In fact, it's looking very hot and smoky for you. And it's not changing. No matter where I go in the Bible, it is not changing. It's just the same. It's just a little message to you. Just, just a little message. Just a little admonition to you. 
let's go to Zephaniah chapter two, verse nine. Zephaniah, we got two more verses to go after Zephaniah chapter two, verse nine. Zephaniah chapter two, verse nine. Zephaniah two and nine. Let's see if this says anything different. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, saith the most high, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom. So what happened to Sodom? And the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of... Now, let's, now check this out. This is one of the fornications, right? That even Ammon, the mother of Ammon and the mother of Moab did, they raped Lot. Shortly after coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, remember, they had been married to two men that died in Sodom and Gomorrah that weren't getting to know the women, the two, the two daughters. So the daughters. Just like where they had just come from, they went from there to a cave. They get to the cave. And Lot's daughters rape him incest another type of fornication the breeding of nettles and salt pits and a perpetual desolation the residue of my people shall spoil them and the remnant of my people shall possess them abc community there we The, you, it's not good when you start seeing your name synonymous with words like desolation. It's not good when you see your name synonymous with evil, wickedness, and abomination. But as far as what's to happen, you start seeing words like desolation. That's not good at all for you. There's nothing righteous about that whole community. Nothing at all. Nothing godly about it at all. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 6. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 6. Anything that's even remotely, even compared to Sodom is ending in desolation. That's, that's crazy. Compared to what a Sod where the Sodomites started. Where the ABC community started. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. And we're going to get verse six. And it reads. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemn them with an overthrow. Making them an ensample. I said to remember that unto those that after should live ungodly. There's nothing good coming to you, ABC community. Second Ezra, let's go to Second Ezra. Last, last scripture. Last scripture. Second Ezra, chapter two, verse eight. Woe be unto thee, Asher, that hidest the unrighteous in thee, O thou wicked people. Remember. I just wanted y'all to hear what Most High, and an instance where the Most High said, He proclaimed. Remember what I did unto Sodom and Gomorrah, whose land lieth in clods of pitch and heaps of ashes, and so also will I do unto them that hear me not, saith the Almighty Lord, saith the Most High. This is my admonition, my message to the ABC community. You are an abomination. You are wicked. You are evil. You, there is no seat for you in the kingdom. There is no going to heaven for you. The Most High didn't make a mistake when he made you a little boy or a little girl at your birth. However, you made a huge mistake when you tried to alter that. You definitely made a huge mistake when if you were or if you are 
a man, you're lying with a man. Or if you are a woman and lying with a woman. There's nothing righteous about it. That's just a few of the messages I have for you. But here's another couple more. There's nothing good to come for you, ABC community. Nothing good. In fact, everywhere I saw is fire, smoke, and desolation for you. So with that, that's my message to you. The ABC community, the multiple alphabet community, modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. That is my message to you. With that, Israel, keep in prayer those that I, I ask that you keep in prayer. Till next time, be it the most I will. It's your brother, Marcus G. I love you and Shalom.